Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage. So many things to cover, uh, so many questions have been asked. So we've got Olive in the workshop, and Olive is a project vehicle. Uh, she's probably not a forever vehicle on the fleet, but she will be with us for a little while because, hey, Volkswagen T2, there's always plenty to do. And our plan with her is to uh, get it as good as she can be at a reasonable cost, enjoy her for a little while, and then maybe move her along to a new owner. We'll see how that works out. Um, are we moving away from the Jaguar stuff? Hell no. Um, but the Jag is obviously outside whilst Olive is in here. And um, we've got lots and lots of jobs, videos, uh, adventures to share with you with Purdy. Um, the very next things that are coming up on her are looking at the results of the brake swap and upgrade. So lots to share very, very soon. Uh, showing you how I've converted my XK8 to include Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth phone, hands-free system, um, dimming out my sat-nav on my phone and letting the, um, the instructions come over the speakers, all that sort of good stuff. So integrating some modern um, systems into the existing setup. The beard is obviously a new thing. Uh, you may call it stubble, I'm calling it a beard. Uh, that's just because I've not been uh, desperately well lately. So I decided to give my face a rest as well as the rest of me. Um, that will be coming off in a couple of days. So no, no changes in image are included in this video. I've had a fair number of requests for what's the numbers, what can you share, what's the detail on Olive? Because there's plenty of people out there who are just as passionate about the Volkswagens as they are about the Jags. So I'm gonna share a little bit on that with you and why um, she needs to be in here. Why, why was some uh, love and attention required? Here we go. So here she is. Olive or olive oil, as she is known, is a Volkswagen T2 or Type 2 transporter, uh, commonly known as the bay window in the Volkswagen community. The earlier iterations of Volkswagen's Bully, Microbus, Camper Van, call it what you like, were known as the split screen. Um, the most distinguishing feature, if you're not a Volkswagen aficionado, is obviously two windscreens, two separate screens, but actually the T2, or bay window, is significantly different in almost every way cosmetically. Panels are entirely different. It is a slightly broader, larger, taller vehicle with a sliding door rather than barn style doors. It's a different vehicle really. The underpinnings are very much from the same family and same heritage. So if you like your Volkswagens, then the T2 and the Splitty are very much cousins. Many of you will have seen our video of the collection caper getting Olive back home from Hastings and will have gone along with us on that journey and know that she's got a few little issues. But what we're looking at here is actually a bus which is mechanically sound underneath chassis wise, bodywork wise is absolutely solid does have a few cosmetic issues, which I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go with uh, correcting those. I'll uh, show you once more the sort of worst bits of the vehicle, if you like. So she's pretty straight. There's uh, a few little wrinkles in the major panels. Seams have a few blisters on, which could probably be cleaned up very easily, but again, you need to blow in the paint. Um, she's had lots of repairs and love and money spent on her over the years and is probably coming around for the next generation of that love. And you see that the rear wheel arch has been changed on this side and where it's been welded in is just starting to scar up again and there is a little bit of crust on that edge. 
and there's a previous repair to the rear quarter where the paint is split. The rest of it is actually pretty decent. Um, the normal rough bits around windows have all been treated and painted, if not done in the best possible way. Kenny Everett reference there. Um, doors look in remarkable condition. So remarkable that cannot be standard, <laughs> it cannot be original. The mask or front clip is entirely new. As we go down the side, again the outer skin on this door is in really good condition, but is showing a little bit of signs down the bottom here that the skin has been replaced, therefore a bit of welding has gone on and a bit of blistering. But we're talking about a 42, 43 year old vehicle here. This is in good condition. For something that's not been messed around with to look better than it is anyway. That's what I like about Olive. This is exactly, you're getting exactly what you see. It's not bodged up. Um, rear quarter on this side, much, much better. Back panels have been replaced at some stage. New tailgate, new engine cover. Uh, again, a little bit of blistering and corrosion where seams are. And a little bit of scabbiness around the windows. But again, honest, straightforward van. She is a 1979. So this is actually the last year of the official Volkswagen build of the Transporter T2. And if you look at the odometer, you'll see 34,680. And from looking at the paperwork I have with the van, what this tells us is the engine and the gearbox were replaced about 2006 and at this point the speedo was replaced or reset. So it's done just under 100,000 miles and then this is how many miles it's done since the engine has been changed. Also of note, she's an auto. Um, People are starting to think that I've got a real thing about all those. I do like an automatic, but I don't go around choosing vehicles because of it. There is a big advantage with an automatic on a vehicle such as Olive. And that is that uh, gear shifts on Volkswagen transporters can be quite ponderous. They've obviously got enormous linkages, literally front to rear of a van. And a long stick at that, so they can be a little bit on the vague uh, front so that's that's one thing another is they've got relatively low powered engines by today's standards and if you've got a manual gearbox you can thrash that engine if on the other hand you have an automatic gearbox it's very hard to thrash that engine there's no dump in the clutches you're not going to be over revving it in the bottom two gears there's only three um, and as long as you're not trying to do 80 on a motorway which is a huge challenge I think she can genuinely do 58 currently flat out. Um, you're not going to put such a lot of strain on the engine. So there's, there's advantages to have an auto box. Plus just nice to drive, easy. So here we have the mighty two litre flat four air-cooled Volkswagen engine. And this configuration, I think a lot of people would refer to it as a suitcase engine. Um, so this is a carbureted engine. You see we have the uh, twin choke carb up there. Um, other items of note is it has a booster fan, which blows air across the heat exchangers to try and assist warm air in getting up to the front of the vehicle to use as uh, your method of heating. So uh, that can be <laughs> challenging. 
Obviously everything works because we got home on our 200 mile trip back from Hastings, but everything needs a lot of uh, loving and bringing it back to a respectable standard. So a little bit grotty and grim. Um, previous owner has had the battery tray area replaced on the passenger side. So that's a good spot for a leisure battery. And then on the other side, you've got the actual car battery that runs the vehicle. And that's not clamped down in any way whatsoever. So that's something for us to sort. Um, these vehicles do have a bit of a reputation for catching fire if they're not serviced properly and uh, put together properly. So I should be checking out all fuel lines and connections that go through bulkheads, etc, etc. So, yeah, she's looking a bit grotty, but she's all there. And I'd just like to point out that I've got uh, wine corks on the screw heads that hold the number plate on. So I'm already endeared to her. Okay, we're going under. Well, you are anyway. So, just to show, this is a very sound buzz. We have a look underneath. That's the heat exchangers you're looking at there. There's the exhaust. I'm not in a position to lift the van at the moment because I haven't worked out um, how best to jack her up or support her on my ramps. Go underneath again, you can see the floors of the van in absolutely fantastic condition. Again, if you know your Volkswagens, for a van that's not really been messed with too much, this is heaven. Absolute heaven. There's work being done. You see, that's a new rigger, outrigger, but done properly, not a problem. This is an honest vehicle and will make somebody an incredible long-term VW project. So, if it's so great, I hear you all cry, how come a scruffy oik like you, John, who's uh, more into his jacks and uh, downhill chariots, can afford to have this as a spare about him? There must be something very wrong with it because they, they fetch 20 odd grand. Um, well, yes, <laughs> there is something very wrong with it, and that is the interior. And the interior is uh, shot, I think is the word for it. So uh, let's give you a little look at what um, joys are inside it. So this is the cab area. The gear selector, the top's missing off of it. Plus, it doesn't, nothing lines up and nothing lights up. <laughs> there are a few challenges there. The uh, flooring is falling to pieces. The kickboard is falling to pieces. The wiring is exposed when it should be covered. The heater grills heating up the area behind the kickboard. We have a broken glove box door. <coughs> Vents that don't turn off. Rather than that, <laughs> um, the carpet that is sort of attached is only sort of attached. And the door cards are absolutely shot. Let's jump in the back. First thing to say is this is a Viking conversion, which is probably one of the more desirable um, conversions. But this one's uh, the interior is seen much better days. So we've got a relatively high top 
pop top, which can accommodate four people in the roof, and then you can accommodate another two downstairs in a rock and roll bed. But let's take a look at the beauty that lies within. So here we are. Got two rearward facing seats. Um, trim panels again, which design's quite nice, but execution has uh, long since left the building. Let's turn the light round. There we go. Covers literally falling off, leaving behind some actually Westphalia looking seats back here. Uh, cupboards up here. As you can see, all the woodwork is basically shot to pieces. There's a charging station up here, which I wouldn't dare turn on. The sink unit is here. The, what's left, the lids. I mean, look at this, that's how bad things are. Um, here, this is where the gas should live. Water should live below that. There's a fridge up here, which currently doesn't work. A drawer, which no longer fits the hole. A crazy ass knob, which I think is to change as 240 mains and 12 volt. But I'm, is that for the fridge? Who can tell? Door cards again, different one in the back, all ropey as. All woodwork literally is just dissolving. Um, over here, this crazy arrangement in a Viking is intended to be your kitchen. Look at the state of this. And that cooker lifts out and places on top of this area to make your camp kitchen. Um, originally you'd have been able to lift this out. I think it's long since lost that feature. And over here, We have whoops. There we go. Another cupboard come seat. Lots of metal work in the bottom because the seat belts have been attached to this. But some of the seat belts are literally green. Again, all the wood is just literally coming apart. In the back. We have a lot of spares, the buddy seat, which we took out immediately because it was making things dangerous. A lot of spares, there's your spare wheel. Um, some more cushions. And in the roof, which I can't pop because we're indoors, we have a little mattress up here, um, which allows a bed to run that way. This pops out that way by a couple of feet to enable that. There is a hammock on this side where it rolls out and uses a bracket off of here. Uh, on the other side, there's another hammock and that one is able to push out onto the side because, because the roof overhangs the vehicle when it's uh, extended. Um, yeah, so generally, I think you get the picture. <coughs> it needs a complete an utter refit and a rethink as well because basically I just don't like this layout um, and I don't think many other people would either with the uh, basically stove in a box. It wants a simple nice interior putting in that people can enjoy the van with. So much as some of this is original Viking fit I'm afraid it's going to have to go. So 
have another look at this arrangement. This is the rock and roll bed and lifts up. It's got a mechanism on it which enables it to uh, pull forward and out and make a bed. But again, if it's made of wood, it's completely and utterly shot. So hopefully that gives you some idea why I was able to pick up this very sound van. So, some, some of the T2s you see in the UK, I mean, we do suffer a lot with rust. It has to be said in the UK compared to a lot of other countries. But some of the ones you see, I mean, literally, they want sweeping up and putting on a cardboard box, but they still fetch a lot of money because people know that they can rebuild them. And one of these that is really straight and true will, you know, 20,000 pounds would not be unreasonable. One that is smart enough to go use is going to be 15, 16,000 pounds every day of the week. So there is um, a lot of money tied up in a lot of these. So you're only going to get one at a reasonable price if it's got some form of issue. If it looks too good to be true, it is. This I'm completely happy with because it's completely honest. I know what this is and we can do some good about it. So I'll just pop over here for a minute. Here's my clipboard. These are the more mechanical things that went wrong or were identified on the trip back. Hot air, turn on. There is no hot air making it to the cabin. It's the faintest of faintest of wafts on the demis setting. Um, but the demis setting invokes the uh, little fan in the boot, in the boot, in the engine compartment to waft some air forward. Even by T2 standards, it isn't working. You cannot turn off the cold air that comes through the grill on the front of the vehicle and then blasts itself out of all sorts of orifices inside. So air rushes in through there and then runs out through vents in there. And it was freezing. The gear shift selector is stiff and slack. Sounds like a contradiction. Stiff as in hard to press the button to release it and then move it into gear and slack as in the cables must be slack because they don't the gear stick doesn't line up with D when you're in D. You put it in D, it's still in neutral. You pull it back to um, halfway between uh, 2 and D and it might engage. Headlamp alignment is off. Could not see a thing. Indicator function is checking out. I suspected a bad earth because everything worked and then you'd hear the indicator speeding up so just needs investigation it might actually be fine i couldn't see from the outside and door latching the um both doors at the front although they line up pretty reasonably do take a lot of slamming that one's obviously done it straight away and um, to get them to latch properly um so that just needs a bit of investigation the sliding door just i think needs a bit of love on the spring mechanism at the back because this doesn't always pop the door open at the back and you've got to get your fingers in there and give it a pull so there you have it olive oil um we're going to be working on this quite soon i want to get the interior in a condition where we can get the vehicle out on the road and enjoy it a little bit as quickly as possible and we're going to get the mechanical and particularly safety elements sorted ASAP. We're also going to look into getting her properly registered as tax and MOT free. She's old enough and in the UK if you've got a vehicle over 40 years old it no longer needs road tax. You need to register to do that you need to actually go through the motions of getting road tax each year where it's free and the MOT our um, yearly test for safety ironically you don't need to do that when a vehicle is over 40 years old um, it's a nice thing to take uh, and register for so that the cost goes away um, my own preference is I, I will register it as MOT free and go through the mechanism for that and share it all with you but uh, I will still be getting somebody independent of me to look at it every year just for safety and you can get a safety check from most garages 
um, on vehicles that are MOT free for peace of mind. So all that to look forward to. So there's going to be plenty of woodwork and cloth work to be done on this one, um, some mechanical work, and then some decisions to make about some of the cosmetics. Do we go any further with it? Do we tidy the bodywork up? Do I actually get it sprayed again? Um, or it's very, very nice, it's very pretty as it is. Do we just leave as is? All decisions to be made soon on To The Garage.